Hello cultists, I'm back with another newsletter. As I said before, I'm not doing these every month. I'm doing them when I have a nice collection of good juicy news for you guys. So let's get into the Lovecraft related news since, well, the last one. For those of you looking to take a trip this year, perhaps consider going to Providence, Rhode Island and going in August and joining the Necronomicon event taking place from Thursday the 18th to Sunday the 21st of August. Ticket sales have been delayed again due to the whole corona drama, but now things will be available from February the 18th, apparently. There are as usual various pricing tiers depending on how much you'd like to spend and for those concerned that perhaps due to the tumultuous times that we live in, it's a risk to spend a few hundred on an event which may be cancelled. The organizers, due to this reason, offer a full refund up to a month before the event takes place, so if it really does get cancelled, you'll get your money back from this place. Speaking of this Necronomicon event, I made a post about this earlier, but for those of you who missed it, I will be attending it this year. I haven't gotten the tickets yet due to the fact that, well, as I said, they only go on sale a little bit later in February. But when I do, I will be getting the gold level. That's the top tier pass. It's a bit pricey, but I figured that it's going to be worth it. Um, it wouldn't hurt my fledgling quote unquote career as a content creator and amateur writer to rub some shoulders with some people there so i think it will be a good investment apart from this i will also be taking a tour of the city once more visiting again the various sites of interest to a lovecraftian i missed a few when i was last time in providence i made a video of that trip to providence but this time i intend to film a lot more and perhaps invest in a better camera if you are able to come along to that event, I'm more than happy to meet up, or if you just happen to be in Providence and want to have a couple beers, no problem either. If you're feeling generous and you got some cash to spend, I did discover a Kickstarter which might interest you. It's called the Miskatonic Missives, the letters of HP Lovecraft. To quote the Kickstarter page, Miskatonic Missives aims to build on the tremendous success of the podcast Volumus. Volumus? Volumus. Meh. By Sean Branny and Andrew Lehman of the HP Lovecraft Historical Society, allowing readers a unique opportunity to delve deep into one letter at a time in a visual medium. Part anthology, part epistolary reader, each issue of Miskatonic Missives serves as an ideal companion guide for exploring one of HP Lovecraft's most fascinating letters. Every issue includes a reproduction of the full text of the letter in question, supported by a variety of relevant reference material, including contemporary and modern fiction, academic writing, poetry, and artwork. Each book is arranged chronologically so that a reader can easily follow along with the text of a letter or, where applicable, peruse the issue in conjunction with an episode of Voluminous. In a previous newsletter video, I reported that the director of the recent Color Out of Space adaptation, Richard Stanley, was being prosecuted for abuse by his ex-girlfriend Tracy Robertson, aka Scarlett Amaris. Now he is responding with criminal complaints of libel and harassment being filed against her. Stanley called the accusations lies and damnable lies, and that he has the witnesses and evidence to fully discredit Tracy's story as a dark fairy tale that bears no relationship to the truth. He further emphasized his confidence in beating these allegations. After these allegations came to light, he was promptly dumped by the company Spec Division, which was the one who produced the color out of space and which was looking to do a few more projects with Stanley. Keep in mind, he wasn't prosecuted in a court whatsoever. It's all merely allegations. Stanley further stated, in the meantime, I wish to thank all those who have stood by me through this difficult period. These types of he said, she said cases are very tricky things and it's simply too easy for people to lie for their personal benefits. But in such situations, especially where we are absolute outsiders with no knowledge of these figures, their relationship and such, we must just remain neutral and stick to the innocent until proven guilty mindset. It's a real shame that the company's spec division just dumped Stanley over mere allegations since he was planning to make two further Lovecraft adaptations. Without the funding from a production company, it's hard to see that happening now. Our favorite Lovecraft manga artist, Gotonabe, is at it again. His next adaptation is going to be The Dunwich Horror, which is going to be released in October this year. Don't worry guys, I will remind you close to the date, of course. So far he has adapted a lot of Lovecraft's tales and seems to have no intent in stopping, which is just fine with me. He has reached, in my book, that glorious state that all content creators dream of, when those who enjoy their content will automatically buy their content, or automatically hit the like button when they upload. <coughs> it's a bit odd though regarding his releases. 
I am struggling to find all of his releases in English. Some stories it seems to be that they are widely available in Spanish or they're widely available in German, which isn't really a problem for me since I am competent in both languages, but it would be really nice to see some uniformity in the languages. I always enjoy reading in English first and foremost. How is it for you guys in your countries? Are you able to get all of the releases so far in English? Let me know. The Dunwich Horror seems to be the popular tale this year since it's also the one that the French artist Francois Baranger will be adapting. He is also one of these creators which one will trust automatically with their releases and I'll definitely be picking it up once it's released. I don't know the release date yet but of course I will tell you guys when I do find it out. And now for something a little bit different and something a little bit serious because I think that this is really going to be something. I'd like to bring your attention to the existence of a platform relevant to writers of weird fiction. A platform which after much investigation I believe fully in and stand by their message. The Bizarre Archives is a place where you can publish your own weird tales and short stories of fantasy and sci-fi. Kind of like the Weird Tales magazine during Lovecraft's time. According to those running the platform, Pulp in its heyday was called the golden era of fiction because it was so well received by the common man. The ditch diggers, farm hands, factory workers and truck drivers loved Pulp because it appealed to them. It was written with them in mind. Pulp was an escape from their mundane routines into fantastic stories of excitement. We at the Bizarre Archives aim to carry on this tradition. We aren't interested in philosophical critiques and shoehorned political agendas. After checking out their videos on YouTube, I feel that these people are very sincere in their efforts and mention Lovecraft many times in their videos discussing the platform that they are running and their mission. They offer the option to submit weird stories and state regarding their submission requirements. The Bizarre Archives focuses specifically on the darker side of things. Dark fantasy, cyberpunk, grimdark, sci-fi, cosmic horror and various other genre mashups. While we do accept more light-hearted genres like epic fantasy and space operas, we prefer settings that are weird and strange, bleak realities of future technology, anti-hero protagonists and otherworldly magic that boggles the mind. The Bizarre Archives looks for originality of settings and characters but also masterful command of prose. While pulp is considered by the academic to be lowbrow, we as pulp authors pride ourselves on poetic style and vibrant descriptions. Modern horror and action has traded its soul for gore, vulgarity and cheap shock value. Fucking A. Instead we present our work tastefully and without degeneracy for the sake of degeneracy. Savage barbaric wastelands and grim futurist mega slums are going to have gritty situations. However, we will immediately reject anything blatantly pornographic or promoting sexual deviancy. I sincerely believe that in this day and age we fans of weird fiction need to stick together and that this platform is a good rallying point as it looks backwards away from the revolting modernity of our era to the days of weird tales magazines, the days of Lovecraft. If you have a weird story to publish perhaps consider checking out the Bizarre Archives in the future. I know that these are the people I will be turning to when I finally pull the trigger on publishing the stories I've written so far. More on that in another video. Now, turning to video games, it seems that the legendary video game Quake has finally been remastered. Previously, it was a serious pain in the ass to get running on and optimized for modern machines, but now it simply is installed from Steam and it works, including all the DLC, including the soundtrack from Trent Reznor of Nine Inch Nails, all that good stuff. I only mention this because the game does have some vague Lovecraft fan service, and I personally enjoy the game very much. Our good friend Sandy Peterson over at Sandy of Cthulhu YouTube channel was also a designer of the game, so that's also a good reason to go check out this game. If you feel like picking up Quake, then head over to Steam where they are currently having a massive sale in honor of the Lunar New Year. Happy New Year to all my Asian viewers, by the way. And if you're unsure of what to buy in this Steam sale, then may I suggest that you check out a video I did looking at over 20 Lovecraft related games where I give my opinions on each briefly and say whether it's worth it or not worth it. It's still very relevant so check it out. Finally I am ending on a personal note. I have decided to make a slight broadening of the range of my channel. So far but with a handful of exceptions I have solely focused on the topic of HP Lovecraft. I feel that perhaps it wouldn't be a crime against the mythos to create a few more videos every now and then, never regularly, just every now and then, 
on other authors and their fiction, or since I do enjoy cinema, some films, or on the subject of other genres of horror, fantasy, and perhaps sci-fi, though horror is always my main attraction. Lately I have been reading some other writers besides Lovecraft who I still read regularly, but I have been reading some Robert E. Howard lately for example, and that has proven to be particularly interesting to me. Not everything he wrote was horror, in fact the minority of what he wrote was horror, and the other stuff was, well, it was his style. I've also got this great book on gothic style horror. I also enjoy J-horror immensely, and K-horror even, but I'm also drawn to the older literature found decades ago, when I wasn't even alive, frankly, as well as older cinema. The old pulp magazines are really amazing to me, but not all that was found in the pages of Weird Tales is Lovecraftian horror. So you see, the type of content I intend to introduce every now and then isn't something wildly different, nor something I think that the average subscriber of this channel would have zero interest in. So don't go and hit unsubscribe just yet. This is something I will always keep in mind when uploading, as well as that you decided to subscribe to me because of my Lovecraft content, so do not fear, I'm not going to betray that investment on your part, nor will I bombard you with content unrelated to the mythos without end. If I really want to go off the deep end and make something like really out there or completely ill-fitting for the Arkham Reporter channel, I still got my backup channel, the Innsmouth Gazette, where I just sort of upload whatever I feel like. Right now I seem to be doing Let's Plays. However, do not worry, I am not bored of Lovecraft, nor making this decision because I'm short of ideas. Believe me, I got a ton of ideas relating to Lovecraft alone. Lovecraftian content will still be the majority of this channel, the meat and potatoes as it were. It's just that sometimes a bit of variety is also nice. I mean hell, Lovecraft didn't just read cosmic horror and weird tales all his life. We will see how it goes with your feedback in time. Anyway, my fellow cultists, I hope you enjoyed this rather larger newsletter episode. As usual, all the links to the above mentioned news or where you can contact me or support the channel are all linked down below in the video description. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Cheers.